Hello and welcome back. We are going to create our first form in ConvertKit today, or in this video, I should say. And I'm gonna do two walkthroughs of it. I'm gonna first go through the down and dirty, step-by-step step, just to get you from start to finish, because I personally, when I'm looking for video tutorials, all too often it's i love that people love to explain things but just give me the down and dirty of something make it so i can walk through if i need the further explanation i can always stick around after the fact and so that is the approach i'm going to take with each of these videos is i am going to just walk through start to finish and then go from there if you are one that needs the walkthrough or wants the walkthrough and doesn't want to just go step by step, then just watch as I go through the, the quick down and dirty version. Take notes and make notes of maybe content that you need or ideas for things that you're going to have to come back because it will allow you to prepare for the actual steps that you're going to need to complete. So with that being said, here we go. Let's create our very first form in my O'Malley um, version here. So on my to-do list that they are telling me to do, because again, if you remember correct, we got started, we created that landing page when we first came in, and then I walked through or clicked on the uh, share thing where I can grab the URL. If I was logged into Twitter or Facebook, I could definitely share there too. So those steps we completed already. So we are on step number three, and I am clicking to create that form. What's really nice, the very first time or when you click from that template or that guided process, they give you these nice instructions. So literally we are going to choose your display format. We're going to select a template and then customize our form and then hit publish and actually grab the HTML or JavaScript and we can go embed it somewhere or we can grab a URL to share it. That's it. The nice thing is they do give us some extra resources. So on a Mac, what I like to do is I hit my, or I hold my command button down and hit my subscribe or my, uh, I click on the touchpad or trackpad and then the same thing here. These are great resources. Again, this is how I came across that online course creator article out there. So I like to just pop them open just in case I encounter any problems. And like here, I love that they always give us the how-to version as well. And then you can always go over to get additional information. You'll notice up here, it has the nice breadcrumb trail as well. So you can track where the topic went. Enough on that. Let's go through our quick version here. So where am I going to display this form? Am I actually going to embed it into a web page? So I personally have converted over to WordPress. I maybe am creating a web page for my wait list that I'm going to create this for, and I'm just gonna embed this form onto that page. Or we maybe have something that's gonna be like a pop-up or that modal thing if I go back I could do it where it's a slide in so it truly just comes over from there or I could do it where it is a sticky bar so maybe I have like November would have been great if I had had a sticky bar to sign up for my design forward or December of design forward theme so maybe right now what I would want to do is a sticky bar because I'm gonna create a form for a wait list so if I click that it's going to be super simple. Right now I just have one template for that particular thing because again, all I'm doing up here is creating where they are going to submit their email address and go from there. So here I just want, all they gotta do is um, join the advanced convert kit uh, course and group waitlist details will be emailed and then I just have the email address it is required and all they have to do is say sign up and that's it that's all that I need to do for me personally this color aligns well with my uh, 
my brand color, so I would be fine with that. I can click on the preview to see what happens, and this is it. So this would literally just be at the top of my website, and I can go back. I can go into my settings. So here we go, success. Now check your email and spam folder to confirm your subscription. So they have to actually do that. I like to add that spam folder thing. Where do I want this to be? I can do it either at the top or at the bottom. I personally prefer the top, but that is 100% a preference. Here you could do it where there may be scrolling to a certain point, or you can leave it at the default of the five seconds. So they come to the page and after five seconds, that pops up for them. Which devices should see it? Mobile devices or desktop devices? That's it. And how often should a visitor see this? For a promo that I'm doing right now, I maybe would like this to be every five days because I want this to be something that I'm promoting and so I want them to see it regularly. From here, I could set up my domain if I wanted. Here again, I have that. And then this here is, uh, let's do advanced CK waitlist is going to be my URL. Let's go ahead and add that. And then you can see that it's been added in here. So advanced convert kit waitlist. My incentive here, I definitely like to have this actually sent to them. So I'm gonna click into here and this is truly just Thanks for signing up. Uh, click the link below to confirm this subscription. And then your address would be displayed here and you can do the unsubscribe and the update of your email. Put, leave those in there so in case they wish to make their changes. And then I like to uh, update your wait list subscription. And then down here, we're leaving the branding and everything. Right now we have the free version, so we don't have as much flexibility there to add and remove stuff. Our email address, again, we only have one user, so we don't, get to, we don't change that at all. And all I do is say save. I can then allow them to just go, if I wanted, I could actually give them a download if they're doing that, or you go to another URL after confirming the redirect. There are some advanced settings here. Continue to show the form after they have, you know, when they, re they return. Or you can hide it, show a custom content. It just completely depends on what you wish to do. I'm going to say save and save this here as well. The little, uh, dots here you can archive this once a form is done or if you're it's not the if you didn't have the success that you wanted with it you can duplicate this so once you have forms set up you don't have to recreate it every single time and then we hit publish and this is where we grab our code if i'm embedding this into a web page on my wordpress site or any website i would want to do javascript if that's supported and all i do is copy that I go to the page, there's typically a block that is an HTML block. You would add that, paste that in there. The nice thing about doing JavaScript over HTML is if you make changes to the form, the JavaScript will automatically update. If you choose to do the HTML, every time you make an update to your form, you will need to come in here, copy this, and go update it on that web page. Not a huge deal if you're once you have it set, but definitely a nice difference with the JavaScript where it automatically just updates as you make live edits here. Sharing this, again, I can grab my URL from it. I can go and actually embed if I have that inter integration set turned on between WordPress and ConvertKit. Again, that is something you would need to have the paid account. So for the moment, we're not dealing with that. And then we have some webhook stuff here as well. So I'm just gonna close that and we are all set. I have my very first form created. If I go back to my forms, so that was just a very, oh, I know what I didn't do. And I do this every single time. So up here at the top, let's see, that was this groove form. I always forget to go in here and this is um, convert, convert kit. Let's go, oops, come on. 
advanced convert kit wait list. And I like to make a note of top banner version. So now I can say save that. Um, if I want to republish it, I can, but I don't have to if I haven't already embedded that. So now I have that name to notice it goes right there. So I am going to, so that was just that top one. I am going to walk through a more advanced form here just so that you have it. So in this case, again, I am doing a form. This time I'm not doing the sticky bar. Let's actually go do one that could be inline. We have a bunch of templates to start. So it's really a matter of picking the style that most aligns with what you're going to want to do. I have an image that I generated for my course. So I'm actually going to grab, um, I'm gonna grab this one because I have some text as well that I'm going to, no, I take that back. I am going to grab this one down here because I have an image, I have a heading, and I have some text that I want to gather for my particular thing. So in here, I did create, here's my Word document, I did generate um, the name of stuff, so I'm just gonna grab this. And this is where, again, from a course creator standpoint or a content creator standpoint, take the time, go through it, and we can definitely have a conversation about the content side of stuff. I'm not going to dig into that as we're looking at the tool part of it, but having a full-on plan in place ahead of time is crucial for this. So I have this. If I'm editing this, again, up at the top, we always need to have a heading one, therefore it automatically doesn't allow me to do any changes or anything to that because we always need that top level heading on any kind of web page. And that's basically what this amounts to. If I click down here though, I can add and insert more things if I would like. So in here I have a subheading. I'm gonna grab and copy that. I'm just going to paste that in here, hit enter after that. I want to change this formatting, so I'm gonna make that bold and then go back and grab the rest of my text that I have here. It's a bit wordy, so maybe this wasn't the best template for it, but that's where you get to play around and experiment with this and see what works and doesn't work with your particular needs. Here I have, um, I don't want a download for this. I actually want this to be, this is actually um, join now is what I'm, I think that's what I had down here, join waitlist. There we go. And all I need is that I could go in here if I click up here, I could go up here and I want to insert, um, what do I want to insert? Eh, I think I'm actually set. I don't need to insert anything else. Just get rid of that extra space. If I wanted, I could insert another field here. So I'm set doing a field or I could go in here and tell it that I want a checkbox and my label would be the advanced convert kit course and group waitlist. And let me join that. And then my tag options right now, I don't need to have anything there because I just am adding that to this. We can leave that, um, so join that, that's good. Go back here, don't need to do anything. Oh, here I do need to replace my image. I'm gonna go and choose my downloads. Let's go here and date added right there. We have a nice image. And let's go edit that. Oh boy, we want that to go. Eh, okay, we'll leave it for now. It is definitely, I need to revisit my form because this is by far too narrow for it. But let's actually go into our settings here again. Now check your email and spam folder to confirm that. I'm going to save that again. Whoops, I didn't really want to. My domain is here. 
I can do this, um, advanced convert CK. I want to make it just a little bit different. Uh, waitlist form is what I'm going to add this time around. And here I have that, my incentive. I definitely, I don't necessarily need to go in here because I can leave that pretty default, but you can also personalize that. And again, my advanced, so I'm just going to save there. And here we have it. I have created my quick and easy form. I'm gonna hit the save button, go up here, rename this to advanced convert kit waitlist. Um, form with image. Save that. And now let's go ahead and publish that. Once again, I can grab my JavaScript HTML. I can just grab the form to send it off to someone, or I could embed it into WordPress using that plugin. So I'm just going to close that. So that's the gist of our forms. We have now created both one using a template with an image and some text. You did see that when we're using, depending on the type of page we're gonna have, you definitely wanna pick a template that's going to align with what you're putting on. So having that in mind definitely helps and will 100% make it so you don't have to recreate it. But you also don't have to make things difficult. I love the KISS approach, which is the keep it super simple approach or keep it Sarah simple approach, however you want to say it. It doesn't have to be fancy in any way, shape or form. So next I will go through and create a landing page for this form so, I, so you can see the difference between a form and a landing page. I hope to see you in the next video.